In this class, we will discuss about pointing theorem. Pointing theorem is used to find the electromagnetic power. Let us try to understand the equation. P vector is given by E vector cross H vector. Now, we know that E is nothing but electric field, H is nothing but magnetic field. Let me take electric field by a general equation E equal to E naught e to the power minus alpha z cos omega t minus beta z. Now, let me take some arbitrary initial phase angle as theta 1 and let us say that this is being directed along a x cap which is nothing but along x axis. Let me take h vector or nothing but the magnetic field as h naught e to the power minus alpha z cos omega t minus beta z plus initial phase as theta 2 and let us say that this is being directed along a y which is nothing but along y axis. Now, how to find the pointing vector? We have to take the e cross h which is nothing but taking the cross product of this. Let us say the cross product. Let me mark here i cap, let me mark j cap, let me mark k cap. Now, I know that electric field has only component along a x cap which is nothing but along the i cap right. So, what is a component? Let us write that component. So, it would be e naught e to the power minus alpha z cos omega t minus beta z plus theta 1 right. We know that what would be the jth component? There is no a y component right. So, it would be 0 right. What about the k cap? There is no component along a z cap. So, it would be 0. What about the magnetic field? Magnetic field if you observe it has only component along a y cap which is nothing but along j cap. Rest all component would be 0. So, let me write i cap component 0. Let me write the j cap component which is nothing but h naught e to the power minus alpha z cos omega t minus beta z plus theta 2. What will be the k cap component? It would be 0 right. Now, this will be a pointing vector. If I simplify this what I will get? If you understand if I take the i cap component it would be 0 into 0 minus again 0. If I take the j cap component, it would be nothing but this into 0 and again this into 0. So, what I can see is the only component which will exist is along the k cap. Let us write that component. So, it would be given by k cap. So, we have to just multiply this because this into this minus 0. So, it would be E naught e to the power minus alpha z cos omega t minus beta z plus theta 1 minus beta z plus theta 1 into right. We have to multiply with this component. So, it would be h naught e to the power minus alpha z cos omega t minus beta z plus theta 2 right. So, this will be my p vector. Now, let us try to simplify this equation. For the time being, I will rub this and we will use that equation. Right? Let us use that equation. So, it would be given by E naught e to the power minus alpha z cos omega t minus beta z plus theta 1. Let us rub this. We know that what is this equation? This would be nothing but h naught e to the power minus alpha z and it was cos omega t minus beta z plus 
theta 2 right this was the equation and this will be directed along k cap we all know that if i simplify this equation you can see that i can take e not h not so it would be e not h not e to the power minus alpha z e to the power minus alpha z will become e to the power minus 2 alpha z now i have both the cos cos omega t minus beta z plus theta 1 cos omega t minus beta z plus theta 2 right this will be along k cap now from the maths we know that what is cos a plus cos b cos a cos b is nothing but half cos a plus b plus half cos a minus b right this you already know from the maths let us apply that and conclude the equation so it would be nothing but e naught h naught applying this formula here e to the power minus 2 alpha z there will be half so let me put like this way there would be half cos it will become 2 omega t minus 2 beta z so it would be 2 omega t minus 2 beta z plus theta 1 plus theta 2 right this will be the first component which is nothing but cos a plus b there will be another component cos a minus b that would be nothing but half cos a minus b it means omega t omega t will get cancelled beta z beta z will get cancelled the only thing is left is theta 1 minus theta 2 so it would be cos theta 1 minus theta 2 and this will be along okay, okay. we all know this now let us now this is my power now if i have to find the time average power density let me denote this by s then I need to integrate this over one time period. So, what I mean by is nothing but I have to integrate this over one time period to find the average power density 0 to t over the time period, one cycle e naught h naught e to the power minus 2 alpha z half cos 2 omega t minus 2 beta z plus theta 1 plus theta 2 plus theta 1 plus theta 2 right plus half cos theta 1 minus theta 2 half cos theta 1 minus theta 2 and as it is an integration it would be dt right integration with respect to dt. Now let us if you observe if I integrate this over one cycle the cos 2 omega t minus 2 beta z plus theta 1 plus theta 2 will goes to 0 right. So this integration this integration will go to 0. So let us write the equivalent form. So let me rub this. So what we are saying is over the one cycle this component will go to 0. So what I am left with it is nothing but 1 by t 0 to t e naught h naught e to the power minus 2 alpha z this component goes to 0. So there would be half cos theta 1 minus theta 2 dt right. Let us rub this equation. Now, further I can simplify this equation, it would be E naught will come out, H naught will come out because it acts as a constant 2 alpha z, half will also come out, cos theta 1 minus theta 2 will be there. What I am left is nothing but 0 to t dt right and there would be a t also 1 by t 
Now, if I integrate this, what I will get? I will get dt, dt integration will be t, right? So, t and this t will get cancelled. So, if I further simplify, what I will get is nothing but e naught h naught e to the power minus 2 alpha z cos theta 1 minus theta 2, right? Now, what is theta 1 minus theta 2? Let us try to understand. If you remember in the previous classes when we have discussed the intrinsic impedance, intrinsic impedance, what is an intrinsic impedance? It is eta is equal to is a ratio of electric field to that of magnetic field. So, it is E naught by H naught. Let me say in this way, it is nothing but E naught by H naught if I take, let us assume, let me take the, thang, the angle of E naught as theta 1. If I take angle of H naught as theta 2, right? So, what would be the angle of intrinsic impedance? The angle of intrinsic impedance will be nothing but, it would be nothing but E naught by H naught, it would be nothing but theta 1 minus theta 2, right? So, in that case, can I say that theta 1 minus theta 2 will be nothing but theta n, let me call as theta n. So, it would be nothing but E naught by H naught e to the power minus 2 alpha z cos theta n because this is nothing but the intrinsic impedance angle. We have already seen that theta 1 minus theta 2 is nothing but the angle of the intrinsic impedance that comes out to be theta n. So, let us see how can I substitute h naught? From here itself I can say that h naught is nothing but e naught by eta, right? So, if I substitute here, what I will get is nothing but E naught, this is a half missing here, E naught by 2, H naught would be nothing but E naught by eta into E naught by eta e to the power minus 2 alpha z cos theta n, right? So, let us let us simplify this equation, let us rub this and we will continue with this equation. So, what I am left with is nothing but E naught square by 2 eta e to the power minus 2 alpha z cos theta n. So, we have written the same equation. So, I am going to rub this. Now, this is my time average power density which we have concluded here. If I want to find it out for a lossless medium, let us say that what I mean by a lossless medium. In a lossless medium, we know that the attenuation is 0, it means there will be no free charge carriers. If there is no free charge carriers, the wave will not lose its energy. So, which means nothing but alpha is 0. If alpha is 0, we also know that in a lossless medium, intrinsic impedance is nothing but we have already seen in the previous classes. For a lossless medium, intrinsic impedance is nothing but mu naught by epsilon naught. So, can I say that the angle for an intrinsic impedance in case of a lossless medium, I will say that theta n would be 0 degree, right? So, applying here for a lossless medium, we can say that P will be nothing but the time average power density would be nothing but E naught square by 2 eta alpha is equal to 0, e to the power 0 is 1. So, this would be 1 dot cos 0 is nothing but 1. So, it would be 1. So, we will conclude that the time average power density in case of a lossless medium would be nothing but E naught square by 2 eta, right? So, we have derived the equation of a time average power density in case of a lossless medium. This is the generic equation of time average power density, which we can use to find the average power in any medium. We will see on the unit and more on this in the next videos.